In this video, I will provide you with the framing square ratios that you might need to build a hip roof. The video will not provide you with any calculations for the roof framing components, but will provide you with methods you can use to set up a framing square to lay out those components. So let's go ahead and get started with a plumb cut. A plumb cut will be any part of the roof framing that is going to be vertical, like this section of the roof ridge and these common rafter cuts. And then the level cuts will be any part of the roof framing that will be running horizontal. And I didn't mention this one in the last roof framing video for building gable roofs, but another cut that we're going to need will be a square cut. And a square cut will be any part of the roof framing that comes off of a component at a 90 degree angle or a square cut for the roof overhang. And if that makes sense, let's go ahead and set up our framing square for a 4 and 12 roof pitch ratio. And if you're going to be using a 3 and 12 roof pitch, then you would just simply lower the framing square Keep the 12 in the same spot at the edge of the roof framing rafter and then reposition any part of the framing square on this side to match the roof pitch ratio you're going to need for your roof framing project. So again, in our example, we are going to be building a roof with a 4 and 12 roof pitch and all plumb cuts will be made from this part of the framing square like this one here on the seat cut and then all horizontal marks will be laid out from this part of the framing square like this one here that is going to be sitting on top of the wall framing and here's an example of how you can reposition the framing square by simply sliding it up or down the edge of the roof rafter until you get it into the position where you need it to be to make the mark for your seat cut. And we can do the same thing for the plumb cut or the vertical cut. We just simply reposition the framing square by sliding it either in the left direction or in the right direction along the bottom edge of the roof rafter. And again, the roof ratio for the seat cuts on the common roof rafter will be 4 and 12 for this roof. Next up, let's go ahead and head to the top of the roof rafter where we are going to flip the framing square over. We're just simply going to rotate it 180 degrees so that we can lay out and mark the top of the common roof rafter. And again, you can see where the ratio is 4 and 12 here. This is not going to be the same for the hip. And an example of how the ridge will need to be level. And in our example, we will have square cuts on each end of the ridge. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the jack rafters or the fill rafter cut at the top. And this is also going to be a 4 and 12 plumb cut. The same as our common rafter, except this is going to have a 45 degree angle on it. And if you notice, the bottom seat cuts are going to be the same for the common rafter as it will be for the fill or jack rafters. Let's go ahead and head back to the top where we can take a look at how the framing square is going to be positioned to lay out the plumb cuts for our jack rafters. And like I mentioned, you will have a 45 degree angle because the hip is going to be running at a 45 degree angle from the walls that will be supporting the jack rafters. And to make a 45 degree angle on a framing square, you can just simply line up any one of the same numbers on the framing square. So I could use the 5 and the 5, I could use the 7 and the 7, or I could use the 10 and the 10 to create a 45 degree angle. Or you could simply set your circular saw or other saws you're going to use to make these cuts at a 45 degree angle. Next up, let's go ahead and figure out the roof framing ratios for the hip rafter. That is not going to be a 4 and 12. For the hip, we need the number 17. Or if you really want to get precise, it's going to be 16.97 to make the plumb cut 
or any level cut we need for the hip roofs. And again, if your roof ratio is a 6 and 12, then you're going to line your roof rafter. Then you're going to replace the 4 measurement by that measurement. If I have a 7 and 12 roof pitch, I'm going to line the number 7 up with the number 17 to lay out my hip roof rafter. And I'm going to do the same down here. And don't forget that you can rotate the framing squares if that's going to work better for you. Just make sure that the roof pitch ratios are correct on the framing square. Next up, let's take a look at the overhang ratio. And you can use the same ratio here if you're going to have plum cut fascia board or fascia board that will be installed vertically. However, you won't be able to use it if the fascia board has a square cut on the end of it, like we're looking at in this example here. And I'm going to do another video on this in the future. I could not come up with anything that was simple and easy to explain because you can see here where it's a different ratio. And I actually thought I could flip the framing square over to lay out this part of the hip roof rafter, but I couldn't. And you can see here where this doesn't work. And the reason why this doesn't work is because the fascia board is going to be tilted. We could have used the 4 and 12 like we did for our roof rafters if this section of the fascia board wasn't angled. And even if we took the framing square and flipped it over to where we lined up our 17 and our 4, you can still see here where this is off a little bit. And I'm not about to suggest you can't do this, but I am going to suggest that it might not be perfectly perfect. So it might be easier for you to install the fascia board with a plumb cut on the roof rafter because you will be able to use all of the ratios I provided you with in this video. Or you could use a level to mark the lower end of the roof rafter. And this cut here would be at a 45 degree angle. And like I said earlier, the plumb cut will be the same at both ends of your jack rafters, your common rafters, and even the hip rafters if you use the ratios I provided you with in the video. Just don't make the mistake of using the 4 and 17 ratio for the common or the fill rafters because the plumb cut down here is not going to be a 4 and 12. It's going to be a 4 and 17. These are going to be 4 and 12s, and these are going to be 4 and 12s if you're building a roof with a 4 and 12 roof pitch. Again, you're going to have to change the ratio numbers on the framing square if you're building a roof with a different pitch ratio.